thank you so much to all of the wonderful patrons of The Nerdy Narrative. Join now to support the channel and help pick books for me to read and review. Link in the description below. What up nerds? Welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Leslie. Today's video is my weekly reads. This is just a video where I share highlights and takeaways from all of the books that I have read over the last week. And the main takeaway from this week is <sighs> the books are safe. We're safe. We had a terrifying ordeal this week where Hurricane Milton decided it was going to cross the peninsula of the state of Florida. We of course took precautions. We were prepped. We were watching our local news, not national. Guys, please do not watch national news when it comes to things like this because they're overhyping it. They're over dramatizing it. They're making it so much worse. Everybody was messaging me scared to death that we were about to die. And until I got tired of it, I was responding back with a link to the YouTube channel for our local news. It was very calm. They were collected. They were telling us, hey guys, don't forget to do this. Don't forget to do that. Most of the people who were told to evacuate did. There are just some people who are stubborn. They won't leave. That does not speak for the rest of Florida. The rest of us who live here, we stay prepared for the most part. Like we did some extra things where we brought all of our furniture from downstairs to upstairs. We had plenty of food, plenty of water. We had the tubs up here filled full of water in case we lost power, which was actually the only danger that they were forecasting for where I live is that we might be without power for a couple of days. That was a little concerning for us because the townhouses we're living in has a drainage issue that the HOA is just not going to fix. They have no desire to fix. So we have a little sump pump out there that does a great job of taking care of the water as long as we have power. The first thing on our to-do list is to get a generator so that in the event something like this happens again and we're still here, we'll be able to run that sucker and not have to worry about water getting in the house. I had so many messages from folks asking me why we didn't evacuate. There are 23 million people who live in Florida. We cannot all leave. So those of us who were not in a mandatory or even recommended evacuation zone, we stayed put. Why? We're going to leave those roads clear so that the people who are asked to leave can leave and we're not out there taking gas and other resources from them. We're staying clear, letting them get the heck out of Dodge, which is exactly what they did. Fortunately, the storm lost a lot of power before it hit. And once it hit, because I live so far inland, by the time it got to us, it was just some wind, some rain, which we actually slept right through. There's a lot of debris down in the neighborhood. There's a lot of small branches that broke out of trees. There's tons of leaves everywhere. One of my genius neighbors did not dismantle their trampoline, which ended up in some trees in the median. They better be thanking their lucky stars that it did not hit another house. That would have been an absolute mess. But cleanup is in full swing here across the state of Florida. Those of us that live here in central Florida, on the one hand, feel extremely fortunate to not have had much damage. On the other hand, we are heartbroken for our East Coast neighbors, West Coast neighbors, the tornadoes that hit the state. There is so much damage and a lot of those people were already suffering from getting hit by Hurricane Helene. Those poor folks have had a horrible two weeks going through their destroyed homes from Helene, trying to salvage anything that they could recover and then to have to be forced to evacuate again and just lose no telling what else. I have yet to see any updates from my friends that live over there. I know they got out when they heard Milton was on the way and it's just it's devastating y'all it is absolutely devastating but let's move away from that talk let's get into some book talk let's have some happiness some joy where we can the first thing that I want to remind you all is that I am running a giveaway for the audiobooks of the first three books in the Nightmare Land Chronicles by Daniel Barnett. If you don't want to just take my word for it, my friend Esme has listened to the first two. She wrote some amazing reviews for those, which I'm going to have linked down in the description below if you would like to just get a second opinion, if you will. I'm going to run this giveaway through October 25th. On the 25th, 
I'm going to be using a random comment generator to pick a winner. So be sure your notifications are turned on for YouTube so that you see when I contact you, you're going to have 48 hours to respond or I'm going to pick another winner. And because Daniel lives here in the US on this side of the pond, those audible codes are good for US and I believe he said UK as well. Just to be safe, let's run this for the US only. I don't want to accidentally pick someone in the UK only for them to be crushed because the code doesn't work for them. So US only audible codes for the first three in this series. It is a post-apocalyptic horror about one man's journey to reunite with his daughter on the day that calamity strikes. Oh my gosh, it's such an amazing series. If you would like to be entered in the giveaway, if you have already commented on last week's weekly reads to be entered, you don't have to do it again. But if you didn't comment on that video, you can comment on this one and say you would like to be entered into the giveaway. The only social media app that the author Daniel Barnett is on is Instagram. So you must also be following the author on Instagram as well. I'll have Daniel's Instagram handle linked in the description for you to make it easy on you because he's going to be the one that's going to to contact you through Instagram to give you those codes. All right, now let's talk about the books that I finished over the last week. The first one I finished is The Ark for the Puzzle Box by Danielle Trussoni. This is the second installment in the puzzle series. It's being marketed as a standalone in this series. I disagree. I think you're going to be feeling a little lost if you don't read the first book. In fact, the lead up for what I believe is going to be the main plot for the third installment. If you haven't read the first book in the series, you are absolutely not going to know how it is we got to where we even start in that one. All of the character motivations in the latter half hinge upon things that we learn in book one. And also I would just recommend reading The Puzzle Master because that one is the superior book in my opinion. I was a little disappointed in the puzzle box. It was more focused on logistics and a treasure hunt than it was a puzzle. So I was a little disappointed in that regard, but I did really enjoy the setting being in Japan. I was fascinated learning about Japanese puzzle boxes. So there are some good things about the book. I just think the bar was set so high in the first one that the second one just didn't quite meet up to the same standards. I also finished The Eye of the Bedlam Bride, which is the sixth book in the Dungeon Crawler Carl series by Matt Deneman, another five star read. I don't think I have ever given so many five stars to books in the same series as I have this one. This series has been an absolute joy. It is so much fun. My husband's also reading it. We're having a great time talking about it. We got our best friend Brian to read it who beat us. He read through this series mode through it like nobody's business. We've also gotten a bunch of our other friends started on the journey. So it's been a lot of fun talking about the books with each other. I'm already excited to reread the series. I know that I want to read the physical books. I want to collect the new hardback editions from Ace Publishing. I want to annotate these. I can't decide if I want to go ahead and get started on the first three that are out or if I want to wait until all six are out. I know Ace is going to be publishing books four through six in 2025, early 2025, I believe. So I haven't quite made up my mind on my approach to that just yet, but I know I'm going to wait until I can get my hands on book seven. Just an outstanding lit RPG series that has really gone from being something that was surface level and funny to something that has much deeper meaning. I'm talking large scale intrigue, massive world building. I mean, this is on a whole other level. I'm just blown away with everything that keeps happening, how this author keeps leveling up with each book, just keeping the same energy and building on it their creativity. I'm just blown away. This is author goals right here. I would love to have been able to create something on this scale to be able to write and create so many different game styles and characters and just it's amazing. It's amazing. I cannot recommend this series enough. Those are my two finished reads for the week. What I am currently working on, which I got a lot of reading done this week since I was keeping a low profile because of the hurricane. I started The Fall of the Giants by Gregory Contaxis. This is the second installment in the Dance of Light 
fantasy grim dark series I have fallen in love with the narrative style. If you saw my review when I read the first book, The Return of the Knights, I was having trouble with the narrative style. I didn't like it because it was a tale don't show, but I actually have found myself really enjoying it. Maybe it's because I expected it to be told this way, but this series really throws back to the way that stories were told back in the beginning orally. I'm sure all of us can remember back to our childhood where somebody told us a story or we went to summer camp and what do you do? You sit around the campfire and you tell ghost stories. This series really leans into that style. I have fallen in love with it. It's especially wonderful when you are able to pair the audiobook with it. Guy Barnes is the narrator for this series and I just absolutely love it, especially his voice for Elrond. I am getting so tickled anytime Elrond is speaking to Elliot. And in this installment, our main character, Elliot, has journeyed to the Forgotten Mountains in an attempt to break the curse of the Elder Races, and he is hopeful that he can convince them to ally with him in order to neutralize or defeat the threat of Walter Thorne. So I'm about a little over 100 pages into it so far. For those of you who have read The Return of the Night and the prequel novella, there is a recap that's provided by the author at the beginning. I read that twice just to make sure to immerse myself back into the flow of the story, reacquaint myself with the characters. I really wanted to do a reread of the prequel novella and book one. I just haven't had time and I was putting this one off for so long to try and do that and I was like, you know what? I'm tired of waiting. I need to know what happens next because there is a particular element to the story that is something that I have loved since I was a little girl and I have got to know how it's going to work out. In addition to starting The Fall of the Giants, I also started the arc for The Fury of the Gods by John Gwynn. This is the final book in the Bloodsworn saga. I am loving it. I'm about 40% of the way through that one currently. And just like in The Fall of the Giants, John Gwynn was wonderful. He provided an extensive detailed list of characters also a recap that has done really well in helping me remember what happened in the first two books because just like with The Fall of the Giants, I wanted to reread the first two books. I was putting it off and I was like, all right, I have got to stop or I need to learn how to plan better. And I just decided to go ahead and plunge in and hope that the recap was going to be enough. And it has been. And oh my gosh, there is so much action. I just read one of the best scenes I have read, action scenes in fantasy, which I know John Glenn has always been a master at writing battle scenes. But for those of you who have already finished this arc, the one I'm talking about is the boats, on the boats, the big fight that happened on boats. Oh my gosh. I was reading that in bed last night and it took me forever to calm down enough to relax and go to sleep after reading it because my blood was just pumping with the excitement and just the battle itself was just, it was crazy. It was so crazy, but so good. With the way that I am flying through both of these books, I expect to be finished with them in the next couple of days. And what is next on the TBR? First up is going to be this gorgeous book right here, The Trail of Storms by Ben Alderson. Ben is a former YouTuber. I believe he was also on TikTok as well. This was previously self-published. It's been picked up by Angry Robot Books. They have re-released it with these gorgeous covers. I just cannot wait. And I have a feeling I'm already getting ready to dive into the world of Sarah J Moss upon reading this one. Cause I think I'm just going to love it so much. I'm just accepting that I am re-entering into a romance era of my life. I haven't been there since college. So it's been a lot of fun just dipping back in and just seeing how different and how much better romance books are being written this day. Or it could just B. I was reading smut back in the day when I read romance it was straight up smut and it's probably why I thought I wouldn't like romance these days but I'm just absolutely loving it and then of course it will finally be time to get to the final book in the Gale Song trilogy The Land of the Living and the Dead I'm so excited I pre-ordered the audiobook for this one on one of my rereads of the first book in this series 
I listened to the audiobook and Aoife was so good. Love her tone, love her voice, love the quality that she gives to the storytelling. It just really extenuates the tale in my opinion. There are some narrators who just have this amazing ability, this gift to making the story better. They just capture the emotion, not just that of the characters involved, but also of what is happening around those characters. And Aoife is just one of those and I am so excited to see how that's going to end. There's still one more novella that is coming, a companion novella, and then it's going to be released in a bind up next year. Ah. Uh, I'm not ready for this series to be over. I mean, I'm ready to see how it's going to end, but then I'm going to be mad that it's over. It's just sometimes being a bookworm is torture. I'm going to wrap it up there. That takes care of everything that I have been reading over the last week and what I'm planning to read for next week. Don't forget to comment down below if you want to be entered into the audiobook giveaway for the first three books in the Nightmare Land Chronicles. It will be perfect timing to have some good spooky listening for the week of Halloween. Thank you all so much for watching and thank all of you for your prayers and your thoughts while we were going through these past few days dealing with the second hurricane to hit Florida in two weeks. I really appreciate y'all reaching out, checking on us. It means a lot. Hope you all have had a great week. Hope you've been reading something good. If you have, drop down in those comments and let me know what you were reading. That was so wonderful. Take care y'all. Have a good weekend and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks again to all of the wonderful patrons of the Nerdy Narrative with a special shout out to the Nerds Radiant tier. Chad, John, Gail, Amanda, Star, Tara, Anne, Amanda, Andrew, Kate, Ev, and Sharon.